Hello YouTube, Komodo Gaming here, bringing you guys another episode of Scrap Mechanic. Today we are back in the underwater base. We've got some really exciting things to show you guys here today, as you saw from the intro. Now, we've got a couple projects going on. I've kind of split the base up a bit. Uh, we're going to start working a bit away from it, plus we've got some vehicles that we're going to work on. Uh, if you saw the last episode, which was the uh, huge hover sub, that thing is getting redone. You guys decided that you wanted to see some sort of military sub, so we're going to be doing that. And this is kind of turning into maybe more of a military research facility. So whenever you do the uh, suggestions or when you comment below with suggestions for this base, uh, we might try to keep it themed around that. But anyways, folks, I will flash the last episode up in the top right corner. And if you are enjoying Scrap Mechanic on the channel, maybe leave this video a thumbs up. It helps out my channel. And let's jump right into this. Alright, as always, we are starting up here on the surface. Nothing has changed on the surface. All the work has been done under it. Uh, that's where the sub was. Like I said, that thing is being worked on right now. Uh, we're kind of transferring it over to more of a military style sub. So, anyways... All the stuff that I'm going to show you here today is actually underwater, so let's go ahead and turn that. You're just going to turn those off real quick. Alright, so let's go ahead and start to descend down the elevator here. Now, you're going to notice the base has gotten a bit longer. We've got a whole new section on right back in that area. Uh, over here to the left, we've got kind of a funny story about a game crash, and there's a work in progress area to the left. And if you can see, look how far those train tracks go away from the base. Uh, we're going to start doing some projects away from the base, and we'll discuss that more here in just a bit. Alright, here we are in the bottom of the base. Let's go ahead and convert our airlocks and get ready to enter in. Uh, we're going to go straight back to the main thing that I want to show you, and then we'll venture back to this side and show you a couple of the other things. So let's go ahead and open up the airlock. Alright, we are good to go. We are now in the underwater base. Now, the new area is actually going to be, if you download this base, it's going to be down these halls. You can get to it both ways. So, we're going to go down the uh, side over here. Now, a couple episodes ago, we had the recreation center and we had the uh, lab that we built over here. Uh, none of those have changed up any. Uh, what's actually changed is our new area down here. Now, this is actually really cool. And, uh oh I forgot to close these off. Uh, we might have a big emergency here in the base. We might have flooded it. Uh, normally, I like to close these off with a little construction sign showing you as to where we're going to go. But unfortunately, I lost a map earlier and I lost a bit of progress. So that's why that's not closed off. But anyways, to get to the new section, this is going to have a sign. It had one earlier, but we'll have to build a new one. This is a cargo train that's going to be down here. Now, we might do two trains. We might do a passenger train, and we might do a cargo one, but we went ahead and did this one down here first. So we're going to walk down these stairs, and we're going to get to the cargo train station. Now, I have to thank Mr. Croca. Uh, as soon as I mentioned something about a train, uh, he was all over it. Uh, this is something, I think he helped create one of the trains in the Old Town series. So he jumped in, he wanted to create a train, so uh, we've got a new train in here, and he helped me lay out these tracks, and we'll explain where these go here in a minute. But anyways, as far as the train station itself, this is a cargo train station. This is not a passenger train station. And, of course, it's underwater, and this is going to work a certain way. At least, how I can logically think it works in my head. Uh, but, yeah, we've got a setup here. Now, this station's actually split in half. The train is on the opposite side of this wall. I'll show you guys how we work that room here in a minute because I'm pretty sure there's going to be some people questioning how this train runs out underwater if the tracks are not in some sort of tube. Anyways, uh, we've got the little cargo station down here. This is going to be for building supplies, food, anything that the base needs and needs to transfer over to a new section. It's down here. So say we're going to start uh, new construction projects out, say, I don't know, somewhere out in this area. Uh, we'll start to uh, move the construction materials over there. So we've got stuff like uh, just pallets. You've got all these metal pieces. A lot of the stuff that the base is actually made out of, I stuck down here. So this is like the construction side. And over on this left side here, this is like your plants. Uh, certain food storage. I wouldn't say you would stick your cold foods down here, but this is a uh, food storage that we can also load up on the train and take over to the new projects. So anyways, uh, we'll open this up here in a second. Over here... Uh, this is just a little office. 
Uh, this could be for the head of the train department. Would, would we call that a train department? Maybe the transportation department. Uh, he's got a little office in here. This is actually really neat. I would love to have an office like this. Uh, look at the view that he's got. You've got, well, you kind of have a tree in the way, but the whole underwater base, if you can look up, you can somewhat see uh, the sub dock. It's kind of hard to see because of the sun glare, but the, sun, uh, the sub dock's up there and parts of the overhead above the uh, office here. So, yeah, got a little office, got a desk, computer, uh, just your standard office materials. I'm using the, uh, the mod for the furniture, and somebody questioned why I'm using that. I build a lot of furniture in Scrap Mechanic, and it's all the same, so instead of wasting time constantly trying to spawn in new furniture or build the same thing, I figured we'd go, we'd go ahead and just use this. That way I could go on to bigger projects. So, anyways, this is the head of transportation's office here. Got a pretty sweet setup, so we can walk out here. So if you're role-playing with your friends, you can always have somebody that is, I guess, the head of the whole train station. Now, uh, before we go into here, if we do another train station, say a passenger train, I actually want to have like a dual station. So we'll have this side down here, but I think I'm going to elevate the passenger side. So it would be up over here, and it'll have an elevated train track, as opposed to the one over here that's actually sitting on the seafloor. So, how this thing works, instead of just driving in a tube the whole time, which I thought about doing that, uh, the only problem I see is that's going to take a ton of blocks to do, and I think it's going to lag the map out, so we had to make the train run through the water, and the way we did that is by having this room split. So, we would fill and drain this room, so say whenever the train's ready to go, we would fill up this side of the train station, then we would open up the main doors. In order to do that, and of course this is all completely imaginary, uh, we've got two switches on everything. So one switch is going to activate the lights. Uh, it's going to be a warning symbol saying that, hey, we're filling up or draining the train station or the side over here. And the secondary switch here is the doors. Uh, so we would open up the door here. So say we're done draining, uh, we can pop open the doors. Got piston doors here. And if needed, or say if we're doing the opposite we can close them and open up the side doors from this panel back here so you always kind of have want to have somebody working the panel i know we could do this with sensors as far as the train entering the station and stopping but i thought it would be neat to have an actual operator back there doing all this work so anyways let's go ahead and close this bad boy up and we can walk around here is the train like I said mr. Croca did an amazing job on this train I'm really loving the style of it uh, this is morely a purpose-built cargo train you could probably pass this off as a passenger train too if you were to stick seats back there because it it just looks awesome I mean, it looks it reminds me a little bit of like a metro train uh, maybe a suspended monorail I don't know it's just a it's a cool design and the way this thing works uh, my other train in the town ran on like a single peg in the middle. Uh, this one actually uses the train wheels and runs along this track. So we have track uh, that we can lay down. I've got it on the lift and I can kind of go wherever I want, which is really good because we went very, very far with this train out into the uh, other side of the map. Another good thing about this train and this the one main concern in Scrap Mechanic is lag and this train has no lag. So that is very, very awesome to see. But anyways, here is the cargo bays for the train so if you hit these switches here you get a little bit of lag because it makes contact with the top of the uh, station here but yeah you would grab the supplies your boxes whatever you need construction materials you got two train cars you can hook them in here and you can place everything through here let's go ahead and put that back up it's the collision with the uh, top of the station and the block there that causes this lag so there we go so yeah you've got two of those doors here uh, this would be kind of the cam caboose I guess you would call it I don't know, it's really only two cars, so I guess still the back is considered the caboose. So you can jump into there right around. There is some seating in there. Uh, as far as the way this thing works, uh, it is actually fairly simple. Uh, it does run off a uh, the motors down in here. The tracks do drive, or I guess they call those the tracks. Uh, those drive, and they turn right in the center uh, along with the, uh, the tracks themselves. So you got a free bearing there, and that's what actually lets the train go along turns. So definitely a fairly actually simple design, which is good for scrap mechanic because of the whole fact of the lag. So definitely, like I said, I'm going to thank Mr. Croker for that. He's going to have this on his workshop if you want to go download this train. So yeah, 
Say we're ready to go here, we're going to drain, actually we're going to fill the room now. You've got vents on each side of the train station that will pump water in. Uh, you've got an emergency switch over here. Normally the operator on the other side of the glass would open up the, the big doors, but for whatever reason, if there's an emergency, you can always click them open right here. And those are going to slide open on each side, and we would be ready to go. So we're filled up with water here. Uh, that's the best way I thought to do this. I was going to do maybe a little say domed area on the other side of the tracks where the train would have to drive into that first and then open the doors but to be honest with you it just seemed like a bit of a waste of resources of what we have here so went ahead and did it like that but anyways we are ready to jump into the train so we're gonna hop into here use a lift this guy's a little short he needs he needs some assistance to get in uh, this trains actually really easy to work it's really easy to set on the track you just set it right in the middle and drop it and it's good to go so Sealed that up there. Uh, you can walk between carts. There's little piston doors uh, in between everything. You don't want to open this one up because there is a crack to the outside. So uh, once you settle into your cart, you don't want to move. But anyways, we are ready to go here. So let's go ahead and close that door. And let's slide. Okay, it's not switched. I uh, thought that was uh, maybe the lights on the inside, but I think that's controlled up here at the cockpit. So walk down these steps here. Uh, it's one of those little block seats. There we go. And we are ready to go. Actually, I think we're... Are we backwards? Oh, we are backwards. I'm aiming the wrong way. It's so hard to tell sometimes. The train, uh, the way you set it down, it, since it's identical on each side, uh, whichever way you set it down, you need to pay attention because you can go uh, one way or the other. And it doesn't matter really which way you go on the tracks here. They're not made to go one way. So, there we go. So, all right, here is the cockpit. We're ready to go here. Okay, so to control this thing, the three key makes it go... Uh, the one key, I believe, is a downwards thrust. Occasionally on the turns, it might start jumping a bit. You can use that. Uh, two key is a nice horn. I'll let you know we're about to exit. Don't think we're going to have any train crossings, so you might not exactly need that. Uh, the four keys, your lights, uh, the front lights. Five keys, the uh, side lights. And you can control the cargo doors also from the front here. So we are ready to go. Here we go. This also does drive, I believe, off WASD. The three key is really kind of a boost for the train to make it move faster. Let's zoom out here. All right, we're going on a turn. Let's go, let's give it a little bit of a, this is kind of a, the probably the most rough section here because it's a right, left, right. Uh, so the train has to take a little bit of time to get around these corners. Let's go ahead and speed it up here. We should be good to go. But yeah, this is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and stop here just real quick. It's awesome being able to actually have a logical way to travel down here besides sub to have some sort of transportation system like this this is awesome so i kind of am tempted to do a passenger train say that kind of runs alongside of this uh, let me know what you guys think about that because i think that could be really cool so anyways let's go ahead and get going here say goodbye to this side of the base uh, we're going to do a little bit of a montage to show you just how far this thing truly goes out and We'll talk about maybe some ideas for stuff to build out this far. Alright, so this is probably the furthest point away. So what we're probably going to do out here, we're going to build a secondary station for this train to stop and offload. And that's where we might build some more stuff out here. I feel like this is far enough away from the base to almost make this a bit like a, a whole underwater, just, I don't want to say city, but just make it really awesome and really to where we can expand out this way. Because when I'm going to have to connect everything to that base, that's going to start lagging a bit. But the further away you get from the base, the better the game runs. That's why I want to split the facility up. So probably out here somewhere. Uh, definitely give me some ideas in the comments below. Uh, we'll do some things out here. I've got some ideas. You guys were absolutely fantastic the last episode about a lot of military things you guys wanted to see out here. So anyways, uh, let's continue this journey. And we're going to go drive back into the station. We'll show you how to reset everything. And then we'll go back over the other new things that we have in the base.
Alright, here we go. We're passing by the moon pool. Uh, driving through here. So we're going to load into the station. So of course when the train is gone, the station is flooded. So here we go. Go past the doors here. And you're going to want to slow down. The station, or this the train does roll a bit. Uh, so we'll stop about right here. The operator would get the signal, they would close the blast doors, and they'll start the draining process. Now, like I said, it's probably maybe not the most practical method to do that, but in order to save some bearings and pistons for extra doors and extra tunnels, I think this is probably the best way to do it for the base, so we're going to close those there. You're going to see the blast doors close, and I'm not really sure why I'm calling it those, but uh, that's what happens there. Alright, we are ready to go here. Now, this was actually a big project. By the time Mr. Croca came into the world, we laid out the track, uh, kind of figured out where it was going. Uh, he just basically was like, all right, well, just build a station around it. So I built this station. This took a, a long time to do, oddly enough, and it was just because of a positioning uh, area or where this thing actually ended up being because the whole fact that the, uh, the tunnel actually passes over it. So you see the tunnel up here. And if you look down, you can see the uh, the train under there. And that's, like I said, for a reason. Uh, it's because the passenger station, if I do it, it's going to be up on this top side. So it'll run like a dual track system, one up, one down. So I think that's going to be really cool once we get around to that. Now, I had another thing built for this episode, and this was a bit frustrating. Uh, we all know Scrap Mechanic is in early access, uh, it's no surprise, no, I mean, it's just the way it is right now, so we know it's a little bit buggy. I was down here, I think this is, what do we call this, this is Sector, Sector B over here. I was doing some work, and we lost a bit of progress. So down the hall from the quarters area, we were gonna have some sort of lunch, kitchen, cafeteria. And I had this thing completely built, and the game bug splatted. And every time I would go back into the game, it would bug splat. So I lost an hour, probably about hour, hour and a half of progress. I started to rebuild the room, but I really had a nice setup. We had a full dining area, a nice little kitchen over here. So I am not ignoring the people that actually live in the base. I know it's a little weird for them not to have this already. Uh, but I am going to work on this, so hopefully this will be done by the next episode. Uh, they do actually have a really cool view. You can see the train station from there. This just gives you an idea as to where we are. So the trains would pull out and go down the track. I'll put some more uh, foliage around this area too to make it look a little bit more grown and maybe some rocks and try to make it look like a little reef around here. So yeah, uh, we're right by a life... I think we're calling these. That's actually the escape pod. I get life pod and escape pod mixed up for some reason. But anyways, uh, the last thing I'm going to show you guys real quick, every time somebody comes in here and helps out with the base, I still have a couple more people that are yet to claim pods. I do give somebody the option to have a pod. We uh, looked at Scrubmaster's pod uh, a couple episodes ago. It's a bit weird, but you know, it's it's his pod. I allowed him to have it. Uh, we also gave Mr. Croca a pod, and I just disappeared for about probably an hour. He's like, well, let me work on this and I'll surprise you. And I was like, all right, well, you take whatever pod you want. He chose pod six. As you can see, it's got a little bit different door on it. Let's go into this thing. He has made this pod into his own. This is actually, this is cool. Uh, he's got a little gaming setup here. He's moved around some furniture. Let's go ahead and close that. Turn that light on real quick. Yeah, he's just made this whole thing very unique. And it's probably the most unique thing is this bed. This bed, if you can't guess what this looks like, it actually looks like a battleship. This is like a kid's bed. I don't, I think it's awesome. I mean, I, I haven't had a bed like this in a long time. Actually, you know, I never was cool enough to have one of these beds. Uh, I always wanted one of those race car beds, and I never got one as a kid. I'm actually kind of disappointed by that. But yeah, you can lay here, you can actually turn the gun, and it actually fires a laser. Or a gun. Yeah, so it's a bit odd, but you know, it is what it is. It's his room, he can do whatever he wants with it. Uh, I've got a couple other people. I'm going to give them some room. So we'll have some more uh, of these to show you guys. But I just thought that's a little neat touch. If you download the map, uh, if you come in here, you'll see that. And you'll know whose room that is. Anyways, uh, the map download will be available down in the description. I'll have the mods listed. I didn't have one for the last episode because we really didn't add anything but a platform up there to set the hover sub on. And like I said, the hover sub will be redone into more of a military type sub. And hopefully we'll have that. And we'll have another surprise for you 
vehicle wise next episode so like i said if you have any suggestions comment below if you'd like to like and subscribe everything helps my channel i do want to thank you guys uh, it's been amazing the past couple days we're at the push to a hundred thousand subs uh, we've done a lot of things i'm trying to improve everything on the channel uh, to have the best viewer experience possible also down below i'll have a discord now I, I need to mention this more often during the videos but yeah i do have a discord so if you'd like to join that you'll get the up-to-date news uh, occasionally we're going to set up some game sessions i do try to be as active as possible in there so if you'd like to interact with me but anyways folks hope you guys have a great day and we will see you guys next time in scrap mechanic underwater base Thank you.